Hello, I'm Jeremy Clarkson. And I'm Jeremy Clarkson. And this is Robot Wars. Yeah. Let down your hairs, forget all your cares. Kick up your shoes, here is the news. Take off your shirt, here is the dirt. Take off your pants, bang. Not worse, it's live, not rehearsed. Made for no money, surprisingly funny. Welcome your whole set of pictures. Do they have no idea? So let's see how they do on this morning with Rizzi. It was us. You know, you know, it was you know. two of us. Thank you. Uh, I'm Stuart Lee. And I am unnamed Richard Herring. And welcome to This Morning with Richard Not Judy, the morning TV show with a difference. That's right, the difference being that it is on in the afternoon and very late on Friday night. <laughs> apart, <laughs> apart from that, it's exactly the same right, as yeah. the others. Yeah. Stu, look, I really think, I know we said this last week, but I yeah. think we need to succeed. We need an on screen chemistry. So I think we need to. No, we don't need to do that. We'll just so leave come it. Please, come on. It's like, come on, just try it. You want it. You want it. Leave it. You do. We could be like Denise Van Outen and Johnny Vaughan on The Big Breakfast. Yeah, that, I, I, hate, I hate that. Johnny Vaughan is good, right? He sits there saying genuinely funny and interesting things. And then Denise Van Outen spoils it by just sort of laughing, interrupting, and then explaining the joke he's already made at enormous length. Yeah, that's so true, oh, no, actually. He's, he's, well, he, he says something really funny, yeah, right? Know, and then Denise Van Outen yeah, will point, say was, something else, won't she? And then she'll just explain yeah, what he said. Yeah, it's really yeah, rubbish. Yeah, right. <laughs> She's rubbish. Rich, she can't think Rich, of anything, but she just Rich, says what Rich, he says. In many ways, Rich, you're like... A Denise Van Outen to my sort of Johnny Vaughan, aren't you? What, that? In that I serve as a kind of sexual bait to lure in the viewers. <laughs> um, no, Richard, I think you're like Denise Van Outen, but without the sexual bait element. Which is? Uh, a kind of vapour. Right. Um, <laughs> will you welcome on the Bon Tempe organ, Richard Thomas. Yay! There he is. He's good. He's good. And also joining us today on the listings couch, Husband and wife team, Joe Unwin and the actor Kevin Eldon. There they are. See, they've uh, made a little action figure of Lee Hurst there. <laughs> anyway, um, there's one of you, Stu. Look, oh, he's got yeah, the same haircut. Right. Now, um, <laughs> if you're watching last week, you'll know that, like the new Labour Party, we have written down five unchanging aims, which we promise to achieve by the end of the series. Yeah, let's recap on those aims and see how we've done so far. OK, aim one is to mark Michael Flatley's imminent retirement by organising a gala performance of Riverdance involving all the dancers who've ever worked with him, and that's going to take place on Michael Flatley's face. That's right. <laughs> Aim two, to reflect public excitement at the British Wim Winter Olympics bobsleigh bronze by sending a drunk clown to some deserted waste ground to let off a single party popper and then fall down in a puddle. Yeah. <laughs> Aim three, to counteract global warming by getting all our viewers to blow on the world as if it was soup. <laughs> Aim four, to replace the Queen Mother's dodgy hips with two rotating circular saw blades, <laughs> making her the ideal combination of beloved public figure and useful industrial woodcutting tool. <laughs> and aim five, to avert the Gulf War by bombarding Saddam Hussein with the one weapon he could never resist. Love. <laughs> Those are the aims. Uh, we haven't achieved any of them yet, but there's still six weeks to go. Now, it's Sunday lunchtime, so prepare to be enlightened. <laughs> Peel away the skin of the banana, and you shall see the fruit. And so, as we peel away the skin of our doubts and desires, we shall see God, who is better than any banana, <laughs> by miles. The unusual priest there it's again. Very unusual. Um, unusual. Let's go over and join uh, Joan Wynn and her husband, the actor Kevin Eldon, for this week's phone opinion poll. Our profit-making phone opinion poll this week reflects the current crisis in the Gulf. The question is... Do you think Britain should nuclear bomb Iraq? Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> Dial 0891 338801 for yes, but only if they've already attacked us with chemical weapons. 0891 338801!
Dial 0891338802 for yes immediately, even if they agree to all our demands. <laughs> And 0891 338803 if you think yes. But trivial phone opinion polls about such important issues are morally offensive and in any case are always phrased in such a way as to elicit the response the compilers desire. And we'll be keeping you posted on the results of that as the show unfurls. Unfurls? <laughs> yeah, like a flag or a fern. Oh. <laughs> the married couple there. <laughs> Joe, I'm winning the act of Kevin Adam. Well, Stuart, anything struck your Friday night armistice satirical eye this yeah, week well, in the news? In the news uh, this week, I, I was, you know, it's a shame to see the Irish peace talks breaking down, yeah. uh, basically. But it's weird. I mean, when you see Gerry Adams being interviewed on TV as an accepted sort of public figure, um, it makes me feel strange, amazed, uh, astonished, even. Slightly aroused? Not aroused, no. <laughs> no, no, nor me, well, either. Why did no. you ask? <laughs> um, I just thought it might make... Well, it, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do anything for me at all. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> I think the whole island thing's stupid. It's a waste of time. My philosophy, right, is give Ireland back to the Irish. That's what I say. Well, yeah. what, what do you mean by that, though? What do you mean? Well, I mean what I say. Do you understand English? Yeah, what know, I'm saying but... is give Ireland, the country, back to the Irish. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The people that live in Ireland. Do you... Uh, yeah, I know. Hello, yeah. my name's Stuart Lee. Yeah, but I can't you, understand you simple say, sentences. Yeah, but hello. Are you, hello. Are, you saying, hello. are you saying Irish hello. Protestants or Irish Catholics? Sorry, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> do you mean Irish Catholics or Irish Protestants? What do you mean? Well, give it back to both of them and let them share it. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, but that's the problem. They don't get on, do they? You are being deliberately obtuse because you're jealous of my... You are. OK. All right, what are there most of in Ireland? Catholics or Protestants? Catholics. OK, right. My new solution, simple, right. right? Let all the Catholics live in the bottom bit of Ireland. Right? Yeah. Let them live there. <laughs> and any Protestants right. left over, let them live in a little bit up the top. Sorted. Yeah, yeah. That is what they did do. Did they? Good. It's a good idea. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, but historically, that has proved problematic. Why? Well, because the Protestants in the top think of themselves as British. Oh, well, all right, Steve, all right. Let's listen to this final what? solution. Okay. Let the north bit of Ireland make that British to satisfy the Protestants. Yeah. But to keep the Catholics happy, give it a kind of Irishy sounding name, like North Ireland. Right. Or Northern Ireland, perhaps. No, we really stupid okay, North right. Ireland. <laughs> it's the only people that understand less about Irish politics than you is everyone that lives in America. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Coming up, here's what's uh, on later in the show. At 12.21, Raj Paso will prove the universe is a figment of his godlike imagination, and that if he stops concentrating for a minute, all matter will be sucked up into his colon. <laughs> At 12.30, we'll be asking, are UFOs real? And if so, why do they only appear to people who are mad? <laughs> or too stupid to even operate a camera properly? <laughs> At 12.42, we'll be talking to the couple who've employed Louise Woodward to look after their children and asking them, are you insane? <laughs> Maybe not, she's uh, going to try a bit harder this time, isn't yeah, she? And at 12.50, we'll be getting the women in our studio audience who are wearing the least clothes to stand near the cameras in an attempt to distract from the poor quality of the script, because uh, <laughs> it worked for TFI, didn't it? It did, anyway, right, yeah. um, <laughs> Remember, though, this morning with Richard, not Judy, or as it's already beginning to be known, to Wimranger, mm. uh, it's the only show on television that's directly accountable to you, our audience. That's right, we will listen to all your comments, no matter how obviously wrong they are. And um, <laughs> this accountability manifests itself by making one of you, our audience here today, the king of the show. <laughs> Now, as Neat. king, you're going to be spoiled bloody rotten. Oh, I. Right. Firstly, <laughs> you'll be waited on by our two handmaidens, Trevor and Natalie. Trevor. Here they come. Trevor and Natalie. They're easy on the eye. Hello, Natalie. Hi, Trevor. Oh, <laughs> no, you can't speak, Trevor. We can't afford to pay him to speak, remember? Yeah. Sir, uh, not been going so well with Trevor Richard. No, he doesn't seem interested in me. It's such a shame, Stu. He's so attractive. I want him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think he is attractive, though. I've worked out what it is. Look, look at his face there, right? His face is too small. Look at that. <laughs> that is a small, tiny, that is a size 5 face on a size I 8 head. Isn't Stuart, it? you leave him alone. Don't, small don't face. you harm a hair on his face. Not any either on his Shut face. Shut up. Okay, you right, leave fine, him alone. Right. As king of the show, you will not only be pampered by an outlandishly tall woman, and an absurdly small-faced man. Stuart, right? leave it. You will also get to eat and drink whatever you desire from this, 
The Enoch Powell Memorial Trolley. <laughs> Here it comes, yes. In memory of the bug-eyed, quavering-voiced wrong man who was buried this week, the usual luxurious spread is supplemented by Enoch's favourite foods from all over the world. That's right. Jamaican rum there, his particular favourite. Uh, <laughs> and from Russia there, we've got uh, some Tolstoy Imperial vodka-style spirit drink. That's right. As well as writing the definitive Russian novel, Tolstoy also invented this cheap supermarket imitation vodka. Yeah, that's right. It's for people who think drinking vodka is an affectation, but feel they're too good for maths. <laughs> <laughs> From uh, America, Golden Graham's good advertising slogan they've got, of course, you get that honey taste. Yep, in many ways, a better advertising slogan for honey. Street. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, from China, pot noodles. And in case you like eating pot noodles but are conscious about your health, Pot noodle light there. <laughs> that, that exists. It does. I can't believe it. And this week, in a brave utilitarian gesture, we'll be choosing the king on the basis of whichever one of you came in with the least money. Yeah, right? we did a spot check as you came in, and our king this week, Natalie, is, let me see. The king is James Whittam Smith. Come on. And oh! King James Whittam Smith. way down the staircase. Oh! What responsibility on such young shoulders. He looks terrified and unhappy. We didn't know it was going to be a tiny child, did we? The king is crowned. Long live the king. Excuse me. Woo. Oh. Well, infant King James, how are you? You all right? Uh, yeah. Are you glad to be king? You came yeah. in with nothing, and look at you now. You've yes. got all this. All of you, you've, you've got, got that. Look. I don't think we can show that to a child at right, okay. this time. <laughs> I think we're breaking the laws there. Move on. Well, James, King James, sorry. Yeah. You happy to be king? Yeah. Good. He's not, he <laughs> to, to celebrate your reign, we've created a brand new cartoon series for you. Now. Yeah. Do you remember the Munch Bunch? You were fruit, remember? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Bit, yeah. Do you remember the, the shoe people who were shoes? Remember? Um, yeah, I think I might. Yeah, 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 he does remember that. <laughs> and do you remember Poddington Peas who were rubbish? <laughs> remember them? Uh, yeah, I definitely do. He I does know. remember them. Oh, I bet you thought, little James. I bet you thought there was no other group of inanimate objects that we could anthropomorphise into cartoon characters, didn't you? Did you, did you think yeah. that? Did you no. think that? Did you? No. Did you? Okay, did you? I did. Did you? Yeah. Did, yes. did you think it or not? Answer the question. Yeah, I did. What? No, I didn't. Was horrible. Right, sorry. Well, whatever you thought, <laughs> you were wrong. <laughs> well, they live in your body and they're lots of fun, but they all need each other, one for all and all for one. They come out your belly button when you're asleep and over to organ and they sneak and eat creep. There's Lily Liver, Henry Hart, Barry Bladder and Beryl Brain. Yes, it's time to meet the organ gang again. Who's in Mr Cosgrave's pedal bin today? Why, it's Henry Hart. Hello, Henry. I hear you had your friends round to tea today. And did everything go to plan? Oh. Well, why don't we tell everyone about it? Henry's house stands on a busy crossroads under the Hart Bypass, literally in the very heart of Organland. During the day, Henry and the rest of the gang live in your body, where you can't see them, unless you have access to an endoscope. But at night time, when you're asleep, they are allowed to climb out of your belly button to mess about and have a laugh. There's Henry with two of his pals. That's Beryl Brain. She's terribly clever, though can be a bit boring sometimes. Where's that naughty Barry Bladder? She asked. I calculate that he should have been here 31 minutes ago. Who cares about that urine-filled scamp? said vain Lily Liver, admiring herself in the mirror. The important thing is that I'm here and I look gorgeous. Yes, you do, said Henry. He secretly loves Lily, although if you ask me, she's a bit stuck up. But then I'm not likely to fancy her, am I? I'm a human. And anyone who says I do fancy her is lying. I am Brian Kant, you know. Oh, my, said Lily. What is that terrible noise? Blow me tight, it's Barry Bladder. <laughs> Barry, shouted Henry. What is it? Why are you making all this noise when I invited you to dinner? To dinner, said Barry. Oh, I thought you said you were inviting me to make a din. Uh. <laughs> My calculations show that that is the worst joke ever to be broadcast on TV. 
Oh, don't worry. I've got plenty worse ones where that comes from. Poor old Barry. He is a dafty. <laughs> anyway, Barry giggled, I did bring you this big bottle of fizzy pop. But, uh, sorry, I drank it all on the way. Uh-oh. Excuse me, I'm just off to the toilet. Ha, ha, what a happy crew. Surely nothing can spoil their fun. Uh-oh, looks like I spoke too soon. It's Derek Duodenum and his nasty, smelly friend, the vile bile duct. They are the wickedest, dirtiest organs you might ever hope to meet, and they hate to see anyone having fun, unless it's themselves in the mirror. Ha-ha-ha, <laughs> said Derek. We'll soon scupper their supper. Ha-ha-ha, <laughs> that must be the soup, Bile. Will Derek and Bile manage to steal Henry's meal? Will Barry have more drink and then need to go to the toilet again? Stay tuned to find out. Hey! Brian Cantner. Brian Cantner is still alive, God bless him. Stu, are you still eating British beef? Yeah. What, on the boat? Oh, yeah, I love Raw? It. Yeah. Aren't you worried about getting BSE? No, I don't worry about any of those scares, Rich. Smoking, drinking, cholesterol. Well, you should worry about drinking cholesterol, Stu. It's very no, not in its pure form. It's a bought a bar. You could gag on it. It's no, awful. I don't like it. The BSE crisis doesn't worry me, though, because uh, I'm vegetarian. What, for ethical reasons? No, like... no, no, I'm vegetarian because I hate animals. Right. <laughs> They're disgusting. I don't want them anywhere near me. I don't want an animal in my stomach. I'm not Richard Gere. What do you mean, my <laughs> But at least I will never get BSE. All right, OK. What about milk? Milk? Yeah, milk. Milk? Milk. Milk? You drink milk, don't you? Yeah, I'll right. drink milk. I always will. There'll R always be milk, Stu. Scientists are now saying milk could have BSE, right? We yeah, cow's milk. milk. Yeah, yeah, but there's other kind of milk other than cow's okay, milk, well, isn't well, there? Uh... All mammals suckle their young, after all. OK, goat's milk, then. Are you going to drink No! Milk? I don't want to drink goat's milk, do I? The goat is a dirty, lascivious animal. Okay, right. You don't know where its teats have been, right, dragging okay, right. in the dirt. <laughs> what about sheep's milk, then? Oh! I don't want to eat milk with all wool in it, do okay, I? I'm not right. sick. <laughs> right, what milk would you eat, you know? Well, uh, cat's milk is Cat's nice, milk? Yeah? <laughs> Why are cats any worse than cows? The cat is a clean animal. Regularly cleans its teats with its cat tongue. Yeah, with its cat breath, cat food flavoured tongue that's been all round its cat's bum, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 How do you get milk out of a cat? Anybody? It's easy, Stu. You only have to find a cat that's lactating, oh, which is God. easier than you think. I don't suck it straight from the teats, Stu. <laughs> Whatever anyone says, I'm not sick. What I do is I milk the cat's yeah. teat into a little dish like that, and then I lap it up out of there. I take all the hair and fur yeah. and stuff out first. <laughs> and the cats like being milked, Stu. If you look at their little faces, it's almost as if they understand. As if they understand what, Rich? The... A 30-year-old man is milking them into a dish and then lapping up their milk. They understand that, do they? If you'd listen, I said, I bet it's almost as if they understand. They don't Just understand, shut obviously. Up. You, you shut up. Leave it. Shall a monkey that has followed the word of Christ be accepted into heaven's gates? Yes, he shall. Shall an ant that has followed the word of Christ also be accepted? Such is the wondrous plan of God. <laughs> now, King James, you are the new king for about <laughs> another half hour. Is there any law you'd like to put into, into action? What is it? Yeah, that Jim Davidson should be shut up in prison. Like yeah. Jim Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> He's put in prison. Make it so! Make it so! The king has spoken. spoken. The king has spoken. Out of the mouths of babes, the king has spoken. <laughs> Now, curiosity killed the cat. What a waste of good milk that was. But <laughs> scientists have found no evidence that it can do any harm to citrus fruit. So please welcome our regular guest, who was a little bit nervous last week, but it's the Curious Orange! Come on! Hello, Mr Rich. Hello, Mr Stew. 
I am Curious Orange. All right, are you a bit more confident this week, Curious Orange? Yeah, I hope so. You were awful last week. Stuart, all right, no. give him a break. Come on. It was t it's so boring. It's it terrible. isn't boring. It's it interesting. Is. He's a speaking orange. Yeah, an orange that speaks a load of boring rubbish. Stuart, it's terrible. Shh. Leave him alone. Come on. What, what are you curious about this week, hey. the Curious? Shut up, the Curious Orange. Well, Mr. Rich, this week, this little question has been tickling my curiosity. Just hurry up, was... Stu. <laughs> Do wasps produce honey? Oh. I mean, we all know that bees make honey, and wasps look a lot like bees, but I've never seen a jar of wasp honey for sale. You noticed that? How interesting that is. <laughs> so, it's an interesting I'm question. very curious to find out the answer to this curious question. Yeah. Well, I can answer this one for you, the curious orange. Uh, wasps will steal honey if they get access to a beehive, but they are carnivores. They usually feed on, uh, on larvae and other chitinous insects. Chitinous. Chitinous, Chitinous yes. yeah. Uh, and uh, they, they don't actually store anything in their hives. They're used for rearing wasp larvae. That's the answer. Well, I never. What a curiosity. Yeah. You never guess to look at them no. with their sort of yellow... So, is chitinous. your curiosity <laughs> satisfied now? <laughs> that was a good question, wasn't yeah. it, that I asked? Yeah, it was. Yeah, quite yeah, a good well question. Good. Yeah. So, is your curiosity satisfied? Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the Curious Orange. Curious Orange, <laughs> there That's the Curious Orange. You might not like him now, but you'll all be doing it in the playground in a month's time. Even those of you not at school will be going into playground specially to do it, you right. pervert. Anyway, <laughs> coming up now, another visit behind the scenes of the offices of the Rye and Arch magazine, The Ironic Review. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what will happen this show. Shut, oh, shut up. Shut your... <laughs> I think what keeps my magazine, the ironic review, on the front line of popular culture is its columnists. Sure, they're competitive, particularly Tony and Simon, but it's a competitiveness which breeds excellence, like the competition between cocks in a cockfight. In a cockfight, both cocks learn something about themselves and come back stronger for the next fight. Tony and Simon are certainly my it's biggest not, pair my of cocks. Pencil. It's my pencil, it's right? Not. It's obviously my pencil. It's got my name on it. See that? To Oni. I wrote that. You wrote that. Yeah, it was, it was ironic. It's to me. You idiot. Imagine Prince Ulysses fighting Grant Mitchell. It's brilliant. If I want a fresh, young cock, then I'll turn to Simon. And if I want a cock that's more experienced, if occasionally somewhat jaded and rather ineffectual, then I'll call on Tony, if you know what I mean. I mean, he's impotent. And at Simon's interview, I asked him exactly why he wanted the job. And he said... And I that... said, I don't. Uh, I hate your magazine, I hate everything it stands for, and I hate you. So screw you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So needless to say, I hired him on the spot. And uh, obviously that's a decision I've been regretting ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you're not the only one. <laughs> this week, I shall be writing about how my favourite record at the moment is Cotton Eye Joe by Red Necks. Oh, what oh, is it? I mean, a lot! I don't you? think any of you expected me to say that. I expected it. You did. I did. Oh, yeah. In 1998, you expected me to say I like red necks. Yeah, I did. More so, so, laugh. I more laugh. so than yeah. ever now, yeah. What are you I've always about? expected you to want it. Look, I've written this down for the meeting. Tony likes red necks. You just red wrote that just I now, didn't, didn't you? I wrote, you I didn't know. Right. 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 My idea is that they uh, should put up a statue in Trafalgar Square to the nanny, Louise Woodward. Oh, God, oh, so you're out of the law! Louise Woodward about. has been found innocent by the people who drink in her local pub. Oh, there's no reason why she... Hey, there's no reason why she shouldn't be on it. They should have a statue there. Will you oh, shut up, all of you? None of you have said anything I haven't expected to be heard all day. What about my red next thing? Yeah, including that, Tony. <laughs> So will you just keep your mouth shut till you've got something really ironic to say? <laughs> My favourite animal is an otter. All right. It is as well. All right, the otter. Let's kick that around for a bit. Otters, anyone? 
Some women would relish the idea of two men fighting to impress them. Horns locked like a pair of rutting stags. Sweat dripping down their muscular, bloodied torsos. But I find it a terrible bore. I'm a lesbian, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we get on fine. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship. Yeah, he loves me and I hate him. No, no, he loves me and I hate him. <laughs> no, you love me and I hate you. I don't love you, Tony. You don't, right. So why do you dress like me, talk like me and copy everything I do and say? Why do you dress like me, talk like me and copy everything I do and say? Well, you're copying me now, aren't you? No, you're copying me now. No, you're, you, you are copying me. You just copied me then? No, I didn't copy I don't you. copy you. Like... I don't copy you. If anything, I do the opposite. You do the opposite to me? Yeah, I do the opposite. That's why you're such an idiot then. No, that, you're, you're the idiot, and that's why I do the opposite. Yeah. No, and anyway, you said I copy you. If I, don't put that in the front. If you're, if you're, if don't put that in front of me there. That's, I've got another you question. Can't, you can't hide it with this. I've got another question. I've got something in my It's not very ironic, that, is it? Putting flowers in front of someone. Yay! Yay! They're great. Over to Joe Unwin and her husband, the actor Kevin Eldon, to see how the viewers' phone pinion polls going along. We've had 1,234 phone calls. 20% said yes, 62% said yes, 18% said yes. So, uh, it really could go anyway, guys. <laughs> right, our, uh, our, next, our interview guest today has appeared in the Friday Night Armistice programme. He's written for Brass Eye and for Alan Partridge. But he's probably uh, best known for his appearances in the Pot Noodle adverts. Hey. It's Peter Bainham. Hey. Hey. Peter Bainham. Hey. Say it, Pete. Two. No. Say the thing. No. Pot noodle. Say it. No. Say the thing. No. Say it. Make me do it. Say the thing no. that we all want to hear, feet. No. Say it. Make what do you want to hear him say? No. I don't know. They know. know. <laughs> I'm better known for my appearances You're on not. Radio 4's The Harpoon. You are known. <laughs> I am. Hello, The Harpoon. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Do you actually... <laughs> Too gorgeous. Hey! Hey! That's brilliant. That's the best thing you've ever right, done. Right, off he goes then. That Thanks. is the best thing I've ever done. Cheers. 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 That's all right, yeah. Like, no, do I get money for that? Do you like that? pot noodles, though? Um, no. Thank you. <laughs> I can say that because I'm not in the adverts anymore. Oh, yeah. You noticed that. On TV, was... though, you said you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I, know, I felt were... differently then. That was a year ago. A lot has, right. There's a lot has changed since then. You s do you like the new of... adverts better than the... Have you seen the new pot noodle adverts? No, they haven't. See? <laughs> That's how successful they've been. They're yeah. like the Shawshank Redemption. They're terrible. Even. They're awful, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, what, have you got any behind-the-scenes yeah. secrets about how the pot noodle adverts were made, Pete? Um, yes, they were made with, um, sick. <laughs> and, um, yeah. It's not that... I mean, the ones you buy in the shops aren't... I got sick in them. It's just that I like. It's nothing weird or anything. It's just that I like. I prefer the. T I, I like the taste of sick. Well, sick. Pete, uh, we didn't bring um, you on here just to talk about pot noodles, no, Pete. No. Um, we also want you to eat some of them. So uh, <laughs> there you go. Which is your favourite flavour? This, this is a trick. Have isn't you it? seen pot mash? Pot Pete? mash. This is a That's new a fantastic thing. idea. This is like mashed potato in a pot. Yeah. This is a new thing they thought up since Pete. Are you can eat that. Mmm. It's like potato, but worse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Go on, eat it. Try one. Right. On, try one. On Fist of Fun, you this. played a kind of character the... who, who ate kind of really disgusting yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And then think... for a change, I did the adverts. <laughs> yeah. the, the pot noodle adverts. But... You saw it coming. No, I, 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 don't, I don't really like talking about it because it, I, I became a bit of a monster during that time, really. Right, why? It was just... Well, it's a crazy world, adverts, you know, because you get to know lots of other people in adverts. You know, yeah. I became, became very friendly with... Do you remember the Lund Polly advert? <laughs> there was... Yeah where there used to be um, two pillars, oh, talking yeah. pillars, and one would say, really? get away. Um, <laughs> and then it would disappear and the thing would Someone's collapse. Someone's just saying, move on to another question in okay. my ear. Really? <laughs> um, the thing I wanted to, ask you, with one of those wanted to ask you was, um, you know, you do Friday Night Armistice, <laughs> yeah? The yes. question I have is, how long does it take you and the rest of the team to apply the horrible prosthetic makeup that you wear? <laughs> it's about a day. Is it? About a day, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's worked. How does yeah, it feel to be like the Mine best... Mine takes slightly less than the other How does it feel to be the best-looking bloke on a TV programme? Normally it would be great, but on the Friday Night Armistice, it's just all, all right. <laughs> and uh, you've been writing for a cartoon as well. What's yeah, that about? Yeah. Quickly, in that's ten called, seconds. Okay, that's called Bob and Margaret, and it's about a dentist who's going through a midlife crisis. We'll all watch but that. But he's, he's a cartoon <laughs> as well. It's we'll have to leave Pete there. Thank you, everyone, to Peter. Too gorgeous. Too gorgeous. Too gorgeous. Too gorgeous. Men of Achievement, 1974.
This week's Man of Achievement 1974 is John Anderson, Professor of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Minnesota. In 1969, he organized the National Conference on Personal Rapid Transit and he lists his hobbies as music, golf and tennis. Men of Achievement 1974. Oh, yeah, and don't forget you can still send in your own nomination for a Man of Achievement 1974, as long as your nomination is a man who achieved something in 1974 and then paid for himself to appear in this book, <laughs> Men of Achievement 1974. Rich, mm -hmm. I see you're sipping a tiny amount of milk out of a doll's cup. <laughs> That's not <laughs> that unusual. Cat about... milk, is it? No, it isn't cat right. milk. You get more milk than that out of a cat, I wouldn't you, you idiot? This is mouse milk, mouse. Stu. Yeah. <laughs> Just for a treat, you know. It's be difficult getting enough, you know, milk out of mice. Well, really. that is the problem yeah. with milking mice, the quantity. Yeah. I did once try to farm mice commercially for their milk yeah. once, but it didn't really work out. Lost a lot of money because you, mm. you herd a load of mice into a field. They just kind of escape under the hedges yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And then when you get them into the milking place, the milking machines are too big. They're designed for cows, you know. So the mice kind of get sucked into them. <laughs> uh, you get a kind of milk. Right. <laughs> Sort of uh, pepper army milk. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but you know, you look at the little faces of those mice as they're flying up the tubes. It's, it's almost as if they understand, Stu. As if they understand what, Rich? That a man trying in vain to milk them has sent them to their deaths by sucking them up tubes designed to fit on cows' udders. They understand that. I do wish you listen. I said almost do again. You do you think they understand more or less than the cats, the mice? What do well, you think there? I think on an individual basis, less, but there are more mice, so the total level of understanding is probably equal. Anyway, <laughs> enough milk, Rich. Uh, there's no such thing as enough milk, Stu. There is enough. There'll milk. always be milk, Stu. No, well, People a, love milk, don't, don't you? Want to hear any more about milk. You love it, don't you? Love milk. Because yeah, 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 yeah. there's all it. kinds of milk. Pig's right. milk, yeah. leopard milk, koi poo milk, horse milk. Milk, 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 by the time he opened it, the maggots would have hatched, and all the flies would burst out into his face, thus. On Thursday morning, my doorbell rang. The postman had a parcel for me. I tore it open before I had a chance to read the label. Insufficient postage returned to sender, and the flies swarmed into my house. My plan had failed. But imagine if I had succeeded. Imagine what those flies might have done. Oh, yes, my friends. One day you will all see my power. Rat milk, duck pill, papus milk, weasel yeah, yeah, milk, yeah, there is still. Rich, stop going on about milk. For God's there's sake. all kinds of milk. Yeah, I know, but you've just been listing milk for a minute and a half. There'll it's a always waste of time. be milk, Stu. Oh, and I'm just hearing in uh, my ear that some of you may have lost transmission there again. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll try and sort that out for next week. Uh, you you risk, uh, missed Rich's milk list there. Oh, don't worry. I can do it again, Stu. No, no, there's no, no, cow no. milk, dog in the meantime, milk, winty milk, In the meantime, there's... let's go over to Jo Unwin and her husband, the actor Kevin Eldon, to find out some of the things you can get up to this week in the listings. Wow. Thanks, fellas. Thanks. Well, her mouth is cocked and loaded with words, so when you're ready, Joe. Fire! <laughs> the unusual cottage cheese shop is having an opening ceremony this week in London's Covent Garden. Lionel Cosgrave of Acton's unusual cottage cheese proved so popular with friends and neighbours that he hopes to produce it on a commercial scale. The cheese is made to a secret formula and costs £500 for a small punnet. But Lionel explains that because he's only able to produce half a teaspoonful of the cheese a day, Lionel says, my unusual cottage cheese is full of vitamins and is suitable for vegetarians. <laughs> Unless they're very strict. That sounds absolutely delicious, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. 
And the Admiral Insurance Awards for Unfulfilled Promise will be held in Glasgow on Sunday. It will be hosted by Ross Thingy, who used to be in EastEnders, but left <laughs> to find more challenging work and ended up playing a Scottish Admiral Nelson on a low-budget insurance advert before being sacked. Nominees include Paul Squire, Rednecks, Collie Kibber, the 18th century poet laureate, and Leon Herring of This Morning with Richard Not Judy. Well done, boys. Good luck with that one, lads. And that's all the events for this week. Mm. Hey, guys, I was uh, just thinking, shame old uh, Tony Blair's wasn't nominated for that Unfulfilled Promise Award, you know. He's uh, not really lived up to expectations, has he? Well, he's only been in the job for about six months. A bit early to judge, isn't it? Yeah, but, you yeah. know. But what? Well, <laughs> talking you know, to I, think, I think he's done all right, given, you know, the time and everything. Yeah. Um, so what is it? Do you think he's, do you think he's ha lived up to expectations or not? I don't understand. Is it too early to judge? Too early to judge or what? <laughs> yeah, it's too early. What did, what did you say? I, I said it's too early. Are you happy? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Rich, hmm? I see that you were drinking an enormous glass of milk. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Anything unusual about that? No, no. It's blue whale milk. Whale. Yeah. <laughs> That's one squirt of a teat, that is. is. Yeah. <laughs> They're mammals, they suckle their young. Like all mothers, Mother Nature pretends to protect us, but is all the while scheming to attack us for her own pleasure. Hi, I'm Greg Evigan, BJ from BJ and the Bear. Of all God's things that he has made, the one that there is the most of is insects. There are more insects than you could count ever. This we know. But do we know what happens? When insects attack. This week, gnats. It was a balmy June night and, and Penny and I had just stepped outside for a, a breath of fresh air. Yeah, we were walking uh, through the trees down by the river, which I now know is where they breed, but I didn't know that at the time. We had no interest in gnats back then. Remember, no attempt has been made to tamper with this genuine camcorder footage. I suppose the gnat must have just sort of been there, you know, in the air in our path, and we just walked into it and, and disturbed it. As you can see, it took us quite by surprise because it flew first straight into my hair and then started bothering Eldon as well. I, I tried swatting at it and then uh, I clapped my hands scare it away and it seemed to go. We still don't know whether we killed it or whether it just flew away. Well, Penny and Eldon certainly won't be walking by the river again, however barmy it gets. They have seen with their own four eyes just what can happen when insects attack. I'm Greg Evigan. Goodbye. I made this! Uh, at this point, I was going to ask the King a question about Prince Geoffrey of Brunei, a hotel room and 40 prostitutes, but it seems inappropriate <laughs> given his age, so uh, instead I'm going to present him with this Power Rangers action figure. I'll, I'll treasure it forever. He'll treasure it forever. The King has spoken. <laughs> Direct. Oh, uh, nothing. Mmm, look at that, lovely. You're very pleased with your BSE free milk scheme, aren't you? Yes, yeah, it's a foolproof system, Stu. That one's empty now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK. Good system, but what if all animal milk is infected by the food chain? What are you going to do then? <laughs> What, My then? poor fool. Don't patronise me. There's yeah. other milk other than what animal other milk. milk is is what? Ah. what? Ah. What? Not ah. our. It's not an our situation. What about human milk? Human oh, milk. Yeah. To get enough human milk to drink, you'd have to farm women. Yes. 
Because if you do want to do that... Look, if I wanted to farm women for milk, I would have to kidnap some, keep them in battery chicken coops, then every day the women would have to suckle me and I'd have to store their milk in my cheeks, then spit it into churns, which I would sell by the roadside to passing motorists. You've thought it through, haven't you? Yeah. You, you sound like you do want to do yeah. that. Yeah, I said if I wanted to do that, I would do that. And I do want to do it, so I do! You can't, you can't do that to people, you can't... Stu, they like it. The women like it. If you look at their faces, it's almost as if they understand. You are sick. <laughs> you are sick. I'd ask you this question, Stu. Who is the real sick man in this so-called society? Is it the ordinary, normal man who makes an honest living farming kidnapped women's milk, which he spits along with some of his spit into churns, which he then sells to unsuspecting motorists? It's not looking good for this wait, man. Right. Wait, wait, <laughs> until you hear the alternative. Or is it the businessman in his suit and tie milking the system to make upwards of £12,000 a year? <laughs> It's the first one again, Rich. It's the, uh, <laughs> the milk-spitting, mouse-farming bloke. That's the sick one. The businessman's done nothing wrong. Has yeah, it? it's closer than last week, though, wasn't it? Worse in many ways, <laughs> further away. Well, I didn't think it well, through. I think it through. Well, I know. didn't think it through. Um, are we going to uh, go join us the papers? Yeah, uh, will you, um, to join us, have a look at the papers. Will you welcome back Peter Bainham, please? Hey! <laughs> one moment of confusion in two weeks. Yeah. Been good. I agree with you. How long have we got here, anyone? So, Pete, what has literally right. caught your Friday night yeah, My Friday night armistice <laughs> <laughs> in the literally this week. This <laughs> yeah, week. Yeah. You can say that, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it is my Friday night armistice satirical. I was oh, yeah. caught by the story about Stephen Hawking oh, yeah, in the happened? papers where he said the universe originated, it was the size... He said it was similar to a pea, a pea-like thing. Was Before this... the Big Bang. Yeah, I think right. he's confused everything with just peas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When he says yeah. it's pea-like, do you think he means... Yeah. That it was the size of a pea, yeah. or that it was really massive but had the qualities of a pea. Yeah, it was infinitely large, but right. it was pea matter. I but think he's wrong, yeah. right? Because, like, let's just take this table, right, for a start, right? This yeah. is just a selection of a few of the things that are in the universe, but by no means the majority, right? <laughs> Let me try and get <laughs> means. By no means, things. probably like less than 50% of the things <laughs> in the universe are here. I reckon if I tried to put these all together, yeah. like, I'm never going to get that down to the mm. size of a pea, so yeah. how. He hasn't thought it through, Stephen. Yeah, pure, uh, pure science, Rich, yeah, there. I think, he I think he says these things because he's cleverer than anyone else in the world, right. so nobody can disagree with him. Yeah. Right. So he could so say, he the universe it. is like a child's dress. <laughs> and we... <laughs> the cheap child's dress. <laughs> Yeah, but, and we can't prove he's, he's wrong. He certainly is a mad discovery. genius, isn't he? he, he is, could be in a James he's Bond crazy. film, crazy. <laughs> I am going to destroy the world with my pea matter gun. <laughs> Have you read The Brief History of Time? <laughs> I have, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, read, I, got, I got as far as anyone else, which is up to Chapter 3. Yeah. yeah. And nobody gets any further. And yeah. if you have to actually look for Chapter 4 onwards, there's nothing there. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just, just pictures like of Stephen Hawking yeah. spending loads of money <laughs> after that. <laughs> and there's the instructions to his voice box. a brief history of time, but it not, it wasn't brief enough for me. <laughs> wow, so, that yeah. was like real satire we did there. Uh, it was, yeah, Thanks yeah. for having us along. <laughs> <for the laughs> we did attack. Give him a big round of applause for Scott Noodles. Too gorgeous, Peter Bain, and there he is. <laughs> For it is written, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. But only I have realised the true meaning of that. Oh. You join us in chaos. <laughs> Some no, unusual no, image. That's the end of the show. Uh, this <laughs> final section is going to be directed by the BBC's new blind director. Yeah, he just did the previous bit as well. So well, well. But uh, that particular shot was actually shot by a sighted cameraman. Yeah, check your prejudice in. The You're door. the sick one. Oh, just time to get our. Uh, just time to get the results of the phone poll from Joanne Wynne and her husband, the actor Kevin Eldon. Yes, and as you remember, the question was, uh, should Britain bomb uh, Iraq? Iraq. Uh, please. And uh, <laughs> we had 1,270 phone calls, and the results are 20% said yes, 62% said yes, and 18% said yes. Yes. Pretty conclusive there. Right, next week, the king of the show is going to be our oldest viewer, so if you think you might be the oldest person watching the show, then write to us, tell us how old you are, and if you're the oldest viewer, then you could be sitting there with that very young person sitting. Yeah. Oh, the irony. That's right. <laughs> and <laughs> the address for that or anything else is This Morning with Richard, not Judy, room 3306, BBC TV Centre, Wood Lane, London, W127RJ. Or you can email us if you're a nit or visit our website there. It's the address should be on the screen, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Are you on the internet, Stu? Um, no, Rich, because um, I don't like Red Dwarf or child pornography, so it's of no interest <laughs> to me.
<laughs> Hopefully, anyway. uh, next week you'll get to see the second part of the Organ Gang, and maybe without a vicar over the top. It's of Sunday. I don't know. <laughs> so let's end with a hymn. He's got the whole world in his hands. Stand up, go on your hand. Church of England hat. Join in at home. Oh. One, two, three. He's, He's got, got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand.